Merry Christmas, or Happy Yuletide, should we say, or Merry Yuletide, Joy Joyful Yuletide. I don't know, the internet wasn't very helpful with that one, but whatever you celebrate, happy holidays. Uh, you can see I'm wearing my, my winter tunic and my red hood here. Uh, has the added benefit uh, today of making me look like a Christmas elf, so, so that's good. Because today, we're going to be doing a top 8 best gifts for a medieval enthusiast that wants to up their realism a little bit, really immerse themselves a little bit more and live more anachronistically. This list isn't in any particular order, but all of these things are going to be relatively cheap, I believe, um, and don't require any commitment further than just owning the item. So if you are a veteran or are a person just beginning with no kit at all, um, all of these gifts are going to fit just fine. You can start using them immediately, uh, and you don't need anything added onto them. And, and my hope is also that with a lot of these, you will be able to find at least one of them somewhere near you, because in this sort of trying time in this season, I think it's important that we support the small businesses around us as much as we can. So let's get right into it. With number one, we're going to have a mug or a tankard or a drinking horn, what have you, uh, some sort of drinking vessel. There's so many different types of options, each of them, uh, each different material obviously has its its own pros and cons, but this is something uh, that your, your gift E can use every day and up their immersion in medieval fantasy just a little bit and think of you every time they do, whether it's uh, coffee or whether or not you want to also get them a bottle of mulled wine or Viking mead to go along with their drinking vessel. You can go ahead and get a little leather strap so you can travel with it, whether you're going to Renaissance Fair or just going on a hike. Number two, I've got a leather journal or notebook. Looks good just sitting on the shelf, but also every time you pick it up to write in it, you can get that little bit much more immersed uh, in your medieval or fantasy setting. So really good option there. There's all different sorts of sizes you could go for, different styles. You can even get a quill or a dip pen to go with the book as well. Uh, to really personalize it for the person you're getting your gift for. On to number three. A nice, sturdy leather pouch. Something you will probably see, except for right now, because they're on display, is that I always have one of these when I am going out on a hike, because even if your pants have pockets, if you're dressed historically, you might not be able to access the pockets in your pants. So having one of these, one big enough to carry your phone, your keys, just the basics there, uh, and then you can get all sorts of different sizes uh, from there to really specify whatever it is that you want to be carrying. These things probably you'll have to go online to get um, unless you or someone you know works with leather in your area. But you don't even have to look that hard. Something like this, it, it looks fairly period, it does have a snap, so it's, it's anachronistic, funnily enough. Uh, but it looks good, and I use it to keep my uh, pipe tobacco in. But it came in a laptop bag, and I just took it out, and am now using it. And I didn't even have to go to a specialty shop for it. So there's all sorts of ingenuitive things we can do to find interesting gifts. Number four, uh, brooches. These are, they're, they're nice. It's jewelry. You're, you're getting someone jewelry for Christmas. Imagine that, and they're, they're super useful. You don't even have to be all dressed up in garb in order to wear one of these. You can put them on a scarf or, or just on decoration on your lapel or something if you want. These are a great option because they're beautiful and you can wear them either with your garb or with your modern clothes without standing out too much, but still having that little bit of medieval flair. Number five, and all of these can also sort of go together, so if you have the money to buy a whole ton of gifts, go for it. An oil lamp. When you're, when you're writing in your, your leather book, for instance, or just reading at the end of the night, oil lamp really adds to the overall atmosphere of your room. Just a simple little oil lamp. Looks really nice. Both lit and also just, it's also art. Number six, something that I actually don't have, so there's no b-roll footage of this, sadly enough, but a uh, wooden spoon, or a horn spoon, just a personal spoon. Now, in the medieval period, people would bring their own spoons to banquets, so it's, it's, it sounds odd, it's just a spoon, but it, it, is, it is a realistic thing. And if you're traveling for a couple days, you're gonna want to have a utensil, and why not have one that is historically accurate while you're doing it? That, and uh, if you happen to live in a state where they make you bring your own cutlery to someone else's house, for Corona, then boom, you, you already you have a spoon, you have a spoon right there, and every time you're eating cereal, even if cereal's not correct, 
your spoon will be. Number seven, I almost forgot what number seven was, but it is a belt knife. Everyone, everyone should have one of these. Very useful, come, come in handy. You have, a, you have a pocket knife probably in your everyday carry. If you don't, you should. I received this belt knife as a gift last year for Christmas, and it has become an integral part of my kit. Very useful and a beautiful gift as well. Uh, you can pair it with a spoon, and your giftee now has a set of personal medieval cutlery to bring with them wherever they go. This would also pair well with... Number eight. A cookbook, but not just any cookbook, no. A themed cookbook. This one is A Feast of Ice and Fire, uh, but they have ones for Lord of the Rings. I'm sure you can find one for your favorite fantasy series, or you can just get historical cookbooks. Uh, I know that Townsend's, uh, the reenacting company, have historical texts cookbooks from the 17th and 18th and early 19th centuries on their website. You can go ahead and grab those. I'm not an affiliate or anything. I just think they're really cool. Uh, and then that's, that's, that's a fun activity. Just go ahead and make your favorite dishes that you see in uh, Lord of the Rings or, or what have you. And number nine, a little bit of a bonus here. Uh, might be a little obvious, but maybe it isn't. If you are like me, and you are running a little low on funds this Christmas uh, for whatever reason, go ahead and go ahead and make your own gifts. Um, these are just some wands that I made out of dowels, and then I stained them. And honestly, it didn't take that long, and it wasn't hard, but they look they look good, and they're a fine personal gift, and it means a lot that you you spent the time to make something like that. Uh, or if you have access to leather, you can go ahead. This is a leather scabbard that I uh, just made. I just picked up leather working for a LARP dagger that I have, and this would make a fantastic gift. A number of these items you might be able to get away with making the wands, or uh, prob probably it'd be harder to do pottery, but I don't know. I don't know. You Maybe, maybe you have a pottery wheel. Maybe you do. Or make a pouch if you can. All right, there you have it. Top nine, eight plus one. Uh, gift ideas for the medieval enthusiast or living anachronism in your life. For those of you who stayed to the end, thanks so much. I'm, I'm really grateful that you stayed and I hope you found something or some things that strike your fancy or will strike the fancy of someone that you know. If you have something, go ahead and comment below uh, a gift idea of your own. I'm sure the rest of us would really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays.